Good morning, friends. Welcome to worship with Grace Presbyterian Church. We're delighted you have chosen to worship the Lord with us on this day, both here in person and online. Just a few announcements before we begin. You will find in your bulletin a connection card. So let's get back in the habit of filling those out. And uh, if, if you have information we don't have or updated information, please let us know. On the back are signups for all different sorts of ministry here at the church. So take a look at that. And that's a great way to let us know that you are interested or need more information or want to talk to me. Of course, you can always come and tell me. But you can, uh, you can fill out your connection card as well. Also, outside and in the back of the sanctuary, we have our prayer request cards. We have an amazing prayer team that meets every Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m. to pray for me and uh, all the leaders in the church, as well as various ministries in the church, as well as individual requests. So, um, so fill that out. If you have anything, you want more people lifting up to the Lord, please let us know. Thank you to everyone who brought school supplies. We have another mission event today. Most of you know this isn't how I normally dress for worship, but I don't have time to go home between our later service and the new Mana event. Uh, um, if you are a green shirt, you're supposed to be there at 1130 today. If you are a regular worker bee like me, you're supposed to be there at 115 today. It's at the Hilton Garden Inn along George Bush. And uh, Dwight asks that you please wear your name tag for that event. Also, you will need a mask. If you forget one, they, they will have some there, but, but please wear your mask for that. Uh, an, another reason I, I wanted to wear this today is I was inspired by Paula Wilder last week who wore a t-shirt to go with the sermon. So I said, hey, I've got a t-shirt that goes with today's sermon. And I don't, I don't know if you can see it. It says, love over all. That is a, a contemporary rendition of 1 Peter 4, 8, where Peter writes, above all, maintain constant love for one another. Paul feels the same way. He says, there are only three things that last for all eternity, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. I invite everybody to stand and sing with me. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great. Savior is done. See how his love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done Your name. 
morning. The psalmist proclaims in 118, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I called upon the Lord. The Lord answered and set me free. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship the Lord our God. Your glorious God's of God engages our hearts. May Jesus Christ be known wherever we are. We ask not for ourselves, but for your renown. The cross that Saved us, so we pray, your kingdom come, let your kingdom come, let your be seated. Let us draw near to God, confessing our sins to the one who is loving and powerful enough to take them away. We pray first together using the prayer printed in the bulletin. Let us pray. Powerful and loving God, we confess that at times we have let other people and agendas tell us who we are 
what we are worth, how we should think and act, and where we should stay. These voices do not love us like you do. These voices do not hold the wisdom that you do. These other voices do not have our best interest at heart. Forgive us, Lord. Help us to listen for and believe your voice alone because of the great love you have shown for us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. In this silence, let us confess the harmful words you have said to yourself and about yourself. Let us pray. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Believe this good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. to God, so goodness shines on into the sun, His strength is part of me, into the spirit, whose love has set me free, it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be of the We pass the peace of Christ because what else would brothers and sisters who love one another do? Pass the peace to those around you saying, the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Uh, before we go into our song, I would like to invite any children who are here who would like to spend the rest of the worship time at the back table with some self-directed activities. You're welcome and invited to go to that back table at this point. Trenton. Were creation suddenly articulate With a thousand tongues to lift one cry then from north to south and east to west, we'd hear Christ be magnified. Were the whole earth echoing his eminence, his name would burst from sea and sky, from rivers to the mountains. We'd hear Christ be magnified. Oh, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified in the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. Every creature finds its inmost melody, and every human heart its native cry. For oh, then in one raptured hymn of praise, we'll sing Christ be magnified. Oh, Christ be magnified. 
Pray with me. Prepare our hearts, O oh God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, that hearing we may also obey your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first scripture today is a familiar one to many of us. It's from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8a. Love is patient. Love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from Mark's gospel, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Listen again for God speaking to you. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes, and when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs, and no one could restrain him anymore, even with a chain, for he had often been restrained with shackles and chains, but the chains he wrenched apart, and the shackles he broke in pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him, and he shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For Jesus had said to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? He replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. He begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there on the hillside, a great herd of swine was feeding, and the unclean spirits begged him, send us into the swine, let us enter them. So he gave them permission. And the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine. And the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and were drowned in the sea. The swine herds ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came to see what it was that happened. They came to Jesus and saw the demoniac sitting there clothed and in his right mind the very man who had had the legion, and they were afraid. Those who had seen what had happened to the demoniac and the swine reported it. Then they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by demons begged him that he might be with him, but Jesus refused and said to him, 
Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. This is the word of the Lord. So over the four previous Sundays, we have talked about healing and the power of healing that we have, the power of touch, the power of friendship, the power of courage, and the power of faith. And today, of course, the healing power of love. And I need to start by telling uh, or, or by saying thank you. To all of you who prayed for me and even texted me before I took off last Sunday afternoon. Your prayers were answered in an amazing way. Knowing you all were praying, I was very relaxed at the gate. The gate agent announced that this was a completely full flight. So we boarded, and Jack had the window seat, and I had the middle. And to my surprise, no one took the aisle seat on our row. The door closed. No one else was getting on. We ended up with an hour delay because they realized our luggage had not been loaded onto the plane. So there we sat on the plane, and I read my book, trying not to think about the impending takeoff. All of a sudden, the door opened. That never happens, right? When a flight is closed, it's closed. I've been told many times on the other side of that door. (laughs) But I looked up and I saw a pilot walking my way and he sat down right next to me. I was delighted. I didn't have to worry about that flight. I could just watch him. And if he was relaxed, then I could be relaxed. (laughs) Two and a half hours later, as we started our descent into Reagan National Airport, I decided to tell him how wonderful it was to sit by him. I began the conversation, do you have to fly tonight or are you headed home? He looked really tired. He told me he had just finished a trip to Paris. He said, I don't even know what time it is. So I told him, I think it was an answer to prayer that you set by me. I'm a fearful flyer, and I didn't have to worry this trip. He perked up. He told me he used to teach fear of flying classes in San Francisco and that people would actually pay him to fly with them when they were scared. (laughs) He reminded me of all the statistics I know by heart that it's much safer to fly than to drive. He told me that he had been flying for 32 years and had never had a problem because they're so rare. Reggie and I had a lovely conversation as we landed, and he even told me that landing at Reagan is difficult because the runway is so short there. He complimented the pilot on a very smooth landing. I was healed of my anxiety, at least on that flight. We'll find out (laughs) what happens on the next day. So what healed me? Was it purely the power of God in answer to so many prayers, yours and mine? Was it the presence of a professional sitting next to me? Or was it also the love that was the motivation for your prayers and God's help? Do I believe that God loves me enough and is detail-oriented enough to block the seat next to me and put a pilot in it. Absolutely, I do. And one of the reasons I do is our gospel reading for today. The story of Jesus calming this uh, storm on the Sea of Galilee, which we talked about last week, begins with Jesus saying, let's go over to the other side. The other side of that lake we call the Sea of Galilee is more than just a trip across Lake Louisville. To go to the other side meant to go somewhere foreign, unclean, and even dangerous. 
It was a bad neighborhood. The other side of the lake was the Decapolis, a federation of 10 Gentile cities not on good terms with the Jews. As if crossing into hostile territory and surviving a storm at sea weren't scary enough, they're then met on the shore by a man who lives in the graveyard. He howled, we are told, and often cut himself with stones. He was chained, but now he could break out of those chains. This greatly tormented outcast man had been taken over by what Mark describes as unclean spirits or demons. He was without hope. Except. Except that this rabbi from the other side of the lake crossed over to save him. Except that Jesus drug his disciples overnight through his storms to find this man, to find this one man and help him. Clergy consultants would say that's a waste of time and resources. Except that God loved this poor man enough to send a professional. Jesus directly confronted the demonic in people's lives with exorcism and healing. But it's not just his power that sends the demons running. It's his love. His shining love that they can't stand and yell out against. There was no other reason for Jesus to cross over except that this one man living in a cemetery, crazily yelling and cutting himself, was loved by him. I wonder, how did he get this way? Yes, he was demon-possessed, but what opened him up to all that negativity? was a lack of love in his life, at least partly responsible. I think it's very possible. When a child is not loved, the lack of emotional support takes its toll. Unwanted and unloved children show behaviors and, um, that manifest their pain and unease. They foster a negative self-image. They develop anxious behaviors, fears, and phobias. They lack social skills and become impulsive and unstable. Then those demons of worthlessness, regret, unforgiveness, anger, and worry find a home in them. Growing up, was this man different enough to be made fun of by his family, ignored by his neighbors, or shunned by his community? Did anyone love him? Did anyone care about him or stand up for him? Every person and everything in this world just wants and needs to be loved. Notice how Jesus greets the man. He asks, what is your name? Many people assume that he was talking to the demon. I don't think so. I think Jesus was asking the man his name to assess his well-being. You know, that's what medical professionals are doing when they ask your name. They have it right in front of them. But they ask you to assess how you're doing. This man was so far gone he couldn't even answer. The demons jump in to answer Jesus. Legion. This man had so many competing interests in him, he didn't know who he was anymore. That's what the demonic does to us. Demons want to estrange us from God and our own higher self, that image of God in us, and get us to ignore who we truly are. Walter Wink, a theologian who wrote a lot about these demonic powers, attests to the fact that he knows the voice of demons saying to him, you're no good, and you will never be any good. He has heard that hateful liar telling him he is worthless, not precious to God, not beautiful, not loved. Have you ever heard that voice? I have. But 
long before this man was a crazy person, long before he lived like a rabid animal in a cemetery, he was a beloved child of God. Truer than any condition he might have, more right than any other label society had given him, he was a beloved child of God. Even with a hundred villagers afraid to approach him, even with a thousand competing voices telling him he was a lost cause, he was a beloved child of God. And whether he knew it or had long forgotten it, it was still true. God in Jesus Christ took on flesh, crossed the sea, approached him at his most dangerous, and sent those terrorizing demons away. If that's not love, then what is? And what kind of healing did that kind of sacrificial love bring? We find him sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. Love heals. Love heals people. Have you ever thought about how powerful love is? Science has proven that love, both loving and being loved, affects our brains and bodies in the following ways. Increased levels of joy, increased feelings of attachment, safety, and trust. Lower levels of stress, lower blood pressure, decreased risk of heart disease, improved immune health, faster recovery from illness, longer lifespan, and pain relief. And those are just the things that have been proven. I'm sure it does much more. So let's Maybe begin with our own family and friends. I'm a devoted follower of the book, The Five Love Languages by Dr. Gary Chapman. The premise is that everyone speaks and hears a different love language. And when we learn to speak the language of those around us, they will feel loved like never before. All five love languages are good practices and important to do. They are, number one, words of affirmation such as, I love you, you're beautiful, I'm so proud of you. Number two is quality time, that uninterrupted time where the other person has your full attention or where you're both fully engaged in an activity together. Number three is gifts, that's mine. They don't have to be expensive, but something tangible to let them know you treasure them. A card, flowers, cookies, anything, really. Number four is acts of service. Doing a chore for the other person, like running an errand or baking something for them. Number five is physical touch like holding someone's hand if they're scared, rubbing their back or feet after a long day, a bear hug, even a pinky promise. These concrete ways that people feel loved work for spouses and partners, parents and children, extended family members, and even friends. Figure out which one and Dr. Chapman's research has shown that there is one that stands out for people. Figure out which one makes the people in your life feel loved and then do it intentionally. We were reminded this morning in our assurance of pardon that God so loved the world. So as his people, we're supposed to love the world too. Again, I'm not talking about love as that warm, fuzzy feeling we get. I'm talking about love as a verb, a decision, an action. The love that compelled God to take on flesh and die on the cross. The love that caused Jesus to cross a lake and wander into hostile territory. We must, like the formerly troubled man in our story, tell and show the world how much the Lord has done for us and what mercy he has shown us. 
that love that makes us give money or hold a hand or get on our knees in prayer or drive someone to the doctor or challenge injustice. That love that apologizes and tries to make things right even when it's not our fault. The love that surprises someone with a gift. The love that mows the neighbor's lawn when they are ill. Love that gives up a Sunday afternoon to package meals. Love that engages strangers with a smile or a conversation. Love that observes to see who is left out or lonely. Love that cares about God's precious children in Haiti and Afghanistan. Love that spends time listening. Love that befriends those who are different or marginalized, or cynical, or hostile. Love that does not give up on those who aren't ready yet. Yes, this is just as hard as it sounds. Just as demanding as it sounds. And the world won't like it. Did you notice in our story that people on the other side of the lake begged Jesus to leave? They begged him to leave. One would think they would be rejoicing in the healing of this man and bringing others to him for healing. But healing hurt them economically. They lost 2,000 pigs. And his healing meant... They no longer had him to blame for all their problems. If the people of God don't start loving others like Christ loves us, the world will not heal. If we love, really love, if we can do this, healing will come because love is so powerful. It's not just one of the three things that last forever. It's the greatest one of those. So I dare you to leave this place determined to love. See what it does for others. See what it does for you. See what it does for this hard, divided, violent world. Can you imagine what might happen if all two billion people on this planet who claim the name Christian did this. Amen. At this table, God in Jesus Christ speaks all of our love languages. He calls us his beloved friends. He eats with us, giving us his full attention. He gives us the gift of his life. He accomplishes the service of our salvation. And he gives us something to touch, something to hold, something to smell, something to taste that is a tangible reminder of his great love. All of us, everyone here, is invited to share in this feast that he has prepared. Let us pray. Great and wonderful God, how can we adequately express our thanksgiving for all you've done for us, for the mercy you've shown to us? We proclaim that you have loved us enough to be with us and for us in Christ Jesus, who was born, lived, died, and rose again so that we might be sure of your love. Pour out your spirit upon us and upon this bread and wine that it may be the body and blood of Christ for us all. Knowing your great love, we lift others to your care. We pray especially today for all battling COVID-19 and those caring for them. We lift up the poor People of Afghanistan, help them, Lord, out of this tragic takeover by evil forces. We pray for the people in Haiti. Political chaos and natural disaster are too much, Lord. 
As teachers and students have begun their school year, we pray a special blessing on them all. We lift up others who need your help and healing in silence now. We offer ourselves to you. We ask you to fulfill in us and in all creation the purpose of your redeeming love. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. On the night before he died, our Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the new covenant poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of sins, for the forgiveness of your sins and mine. And now every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim our Lord's saving death until he comes again, and he is coming again. Servers, please come forward. of God. Come and be filled.
Let's pray. Loving God, may we who have received this sacrament be strengthened in your service. We who have sung your praises tell of your glory and truth. We who have seen the greatness of your love see you face to face in your kingdom by the death and resurrection of your son and the life-giving power of your spirit. Amen. Friends, we have some uh, fun and exciting and education news to share with you. Starting September 19th, we are going to embark on a journey from the beginning of the Bible to the end. Um, the reason for that start date is we want to learn about Easter on Easter. So we back up from that and start, and then we'll finish in May. Um, it, uh, the story, the curriculum is called, is two parts. One is a Bible. It's an abridged version of the scripture. It's chronological, and it's written like a novel. So all the romance, all the drama, all the intrigue, all the highs, all the lows really come out. And actually, most of the biblical text is in uh, this story, it, and it's amazing to read like that, not have to worry about what happened when. You, you follow it very easily. It comes with a study curriculum that's 31 weeks, um, and the resources are available in the back for $15 if you would like one. You can do it on your own. You can do it as a family. You can join a class that is doing it. I know Bible Boomers is doing it. I'm not uh, certain what other classes are doing it, but or or, so if your group wants to do it, just let us know and we'll get you the resources uh, to do it. So um, it, it will be really exciting and um, uh, not to spoil the end, but God wins. And we all end up together face to face. But it's wonderful to see how this story unfolds because it's our story. We're part of this story. And it's God's great story. So, so I hope you'll think about uh, joining us for that. Also, in the spring, we had our first ESL class after COVID. That stands for English as a Second Language. They had so much fun. Uh, we want to show you a short video of, uh, of what they did last spring. So uh, take a look. They had a fantastic time, doesn't it? They enjoyed some great international food, met so many wonderful people, and um, it, we had volunteer teachers. Um, Eunice Prabhati is, uh, is organizing another class to start in a couple weeks. So if you would benefit or you know someone else who might benefit from um, learning more English, it's free. 
um, send them our way. Uh, there are also ads on Facebook for that. Friends, it is good to give. It's a sign of love. You can give today as you leave with our ushers or always online at gracepc.org. I invite you to give as love demands. You were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ our King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Death could not hold you. The veil tore me silence the boast of sin and grave. Heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name above all things. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand again. Powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. All right, we're going to try something new here. We have a longer version of the doxology I want to teach you guys, all right? You'll bear with me here. So there's a different chorus, and I want you to sing this with me. Praise the Father. Praise the Son, praise the Spirit now with us. Every moment, all our days, God be praised, God be praised. Just like that, there okay, we go. And it takes our time. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise the Praise God with morning's breaking light. Praise Him through darkness of the night. Praise Him with every breath of life. Praise Him, my soul. the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit now with us. Every moment, all our days, God be praised, God be praised. Amen. 
Let us pray. For the love that comforts us and the love that confronts us, we thank you, O God. For the love that heals us and the love that challenges us to do better, we thank you, O God. Accept the gifts we give today in response to your great love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Come let us worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. Great things. Oh God.